you know, when uh, I started to help these kids, two of them died. One of them died because he has a problem in his brain, and the other one, uh, that girl, died of uh, cholera. So uh, I had two tragedies in my life, and uh, you know, these tragedies really broke my heart, and I was really feeling really bad. Uh, I, I didn't know what to do. I said, I'm not going to help any more children. Uh, I cannot do this anymore because maybe one day one of the kids will die. Maybe uh, maybe something will happen to them. Maybe uh, Saudi led coalition will bomb them or kill them, you know. Uh, so I said, and I said that I'm not going to do this, to do this anymore. I was amazed by uh, that boy, Jamal, the one who was, I started to help, and he, like I told you, he was suffering from nutrition. So I, I, like I was amazed by his actions because before he couldn't play with kids, uh, and he couldn't laugh, he couldn't even walk. He was, you know, he was going to die, but because of that donor, she helped him, and he's now really good. What it means is that we have 8.4 million people that we call now severely hurt and secure at risk of starvation. What it means is that these people do not know where their next meal is coming from. So I know where I'm going to have dinner tonight. These people do not even know where they will get the food from for tonight. So it means that they don't have the, they don't have the, uh, the means to do forward thinking or planning or being to keep uh, stocks. That means that every time there's a price increase in the market, they will have to work much harder to find the money to buy that food. So these are the people that we as the humanitarian community uh, are trying to make sure that we provide assistance to. But it's such a large number that even though we as the humanitarian community, we feed seven million people every month. It's still not enough. It's a huge number.